I think a lot of times when we get into our adult lives, we're afraid to follow our passions. And we think, gosh, life can't be that easy. But I truly do believe, you know, I followed my heart this whole time in my journey in city government, even though I didn't initially know that that's where my passion lied. But I just kept following it and it led to so many great opportunities to serve the city. I'm Katie Tang and I'm currently the Executive Director of the Office of Small Business. Small businesses contribute so much to San Francisco's economy. They provide the bulk of employment in the city, employing nearly a million people in San Francisco. And roughly 90% of the businesses in San Francisco are actually defined as small businesses. And so they contribute heavily to our economy, but also just the quality of life. A lot of times these small businesses, they're more than just a place of transaction. It's a community center. It's a place where people gather, get to know each other, and form memories about the city. <laughs> At the Office of Small Business, I run a team that helps support all small businesses and entrepreneurs in San Francisco, whether they're looking to start a new business or expand, or perhaps they're dealing with some challenges or issues. Our office is here as a central point of information for anyone with a business that has 100 or fewer employees. I was someone, when I was growing up, I had many ideas of what I wanted to do. I mean, I wanted to be an Olympic swimmer. At one point, I wanted to maybe be an architect or, I mean, you name it, I had so many different ideas for what I wanted to do when I grew up, quote unquote. And I never, ever anticipated entering into politics. This opportunity came along very unexpectedly where I first started um, working for former supervisor Carmen Chu when she became the District 4 um, Sunset District Supervisor. And that was my first entry into politics and government at a very different level. And so when I was finishing up my time working as a legislative aide, I thought, well, I'm gonna go off and potentially do something else, maybe, maybe explore um, opportunities outside of city government, but was then approached um, by this opportunity to also serve as a District 4 supervisor. It's not the traditional route that many people think of when you enter into politics. A lot of people are, they know very early on that that's something they wanna do, they wanna run for office. That just wasn't part of my culture, my upbringing it was something that my parents were wondering why I wanted to go into that kind of a role. I think that this legislation is incredibly important because so many women who have to return to work shortly after having a child uh, feel uh, very embarrassed or don't feel comfortable asking their employer or their immediate supervisor for any of these lactation accommodations. But I really saw it as an opportunity where you could use this position where you have tools like creating legislation, passing new laws and where people listen to you to help the community and to advance causes that are really important to the city and to individuals. So my family immigrated to the United States uh, from Taiwan and they came here in probably their late 20s, uh, almost 30. And so they came here also not knowing English very well, barely could read or write it, but really had to quickly understand English, to be able to navigate services, as well as find a job uh, in America. I grew up in the San Francisco Sunset District, where I spent most of my childhood up until I went off to college. And so when I started working in city government, um, you know, I think I had some, there were some mixed reactions about my involvement working in government because for some of our parents' generation, there's a bit of distrust in government. And so I think there, there were some questions about why I was entering into this field of work. But I think, you know, when I went into city government, I thought about my parents, um, like so many others, who have to navigate city services and resources without English being the first language. And being able to help, you know, these individuals both navigate, interpret what's on an application form, on signage. It really uh, was very fulfilling to me to be able to, to help people like my parents and feel like government is there to support them and not to harm them. 
I think my parents are actually really happy that I retired early from politics and from district, being District 4 supervisor. I could have continued on for a couple more years, but decided to leave a little early. Uh, but I do think that overall, they were able to sometimes actually see some of my work appear in the Chinese newspaper. Through that, they were able to see that I was able to help communities in a very tangible way. During such time that I hold the office as a member of the Board of Supervisors. And Transportation Authority. And Transportation Authority. For the City and County of San Francisco. For the City and County of San Francisco. Congratulations. I also think about one experience I had when I was first sworn in as the District 4 Supervisor um, years ago, and someone actually came up to me um, during the swearing-in ceremony and said, wow, you know, I'm traveling here from Canada um, and I just, I couldn't believe I saw an Asian female being sworn in as, you know, in this type of a role, a leadership role. And that just meant so much to me to hear that, that someone would come up to me and say that and they felt like they were very inspired by the scene. And so I hope that as more and more people um, see people that look like them and more women come into positions of leadership that they feel like they can do something similar. The person that has continued to inspire me is, is Carmen Chu, who is currently our city administrator, but also um, was the district force supervisor when I worked with her as a legislative aide. And at that point, you know, I too was kind of skeptical of going into politics, but I saw I someone started, who uh, had herself never seen herself in politics, got thrown into it, and put all of her heart and soul and dedication to just so genuinely serve people and it gave me the confidence to actually pursue that same job as well. And I honestly would not have either chosen or accepted or <laughs> considered uh, serving on the Board of Supervisors were it not for Carmen. We offer up to $10,000 in reimbursement if you want to make your business more accessible. In my roles in city government, where I have seen the most challenge is people who don't know you at all and that you know, you're really here to serve and help them, that they classify you as, as part of city government and they're here to hurt you. So people will talk to you and, um, and just yeah, treat you very disrespectfully. And sometimes I've noticed that um, they might do so more so to me as a female compared to some of my male colleagues. Um, but you know, I, I just try to be empathetic. I think one of the most significant barriers to female empowerment is that we always feel like we have to be 100% meeting all of the qualifications before we think that we are actually qualified uh, to do a job. Like if we are looking at a job description or an opportunity that comes your way, I think there's a lot of self-doubt about whether you can actually fulfill um, the obligations of that role. Yeah, I think the, the confidence piece is, is really huge and sometimes I think that we make up for it by trying to gain even more experience more and more and more and whatever else that we can put under our belt, um, then we'll feel better about it. But that might not necessarily be the case. We might actually already be very qualified with what we have already accomplished. So I started rock climbing indoors um, a couple years ago, uh, just as an activity to try to spend time with my husband and also just to try something new. And I just find that rock climbing, there's so many parallels to life. Um, you know, when I'm on the wall, I am just concentrating and trying to make it to the next piece without falling off. And there are some days where you think, I'm not making any progress. But then you come back months later and you realize, wow, I've actually hit another level. And so I feel like in our daily lives and daily work, sometimes you think you're not making enough of a change in the city. And um, sometimes you do have to take that time to reflect like every day, as long as you try your hardest and you give it your all, when you look back, you will have made a significant contribution. There's really no limit to where you can go um, in terms of rock climbing. And I also uh, want to remind myself about that in terms of daily life. follow what it is that you're interested in, what makes you feel excited about waking up every day. You never know where it leads you and be open to all the possibilities and opportunities.